slave market in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, the very interesting thing about this, and incidentally, this is a very good picture. There's a lot of detail here. There's a, there's a difference between really good prints and prints that were just put out there in a hurry. But uh, uh, the artist and the engraver spent some time on this. This, incidentally, is a wood block. And um, it was the method of printing that was used by the newspapers and the journals. This happens to be from the Illustrated London News, well before hostilities in 1856. Uh, the British had a very strong feeling about uh, slavery in the United States. Uh, and from the commercial side, they had a very strong interest because of the amount of cotton that they consumed. So uh, it, was, uh, it was a point of uh, great interest. But uh, the Illustrated London News, Harper's Weekly, Leslie's Illustrated News, were all able to get their pictures out in a hurry via the high-speed rotary press and advanced methods of, uh, of producing uh, uh, prints from the woodblock, uh, the advanced woodblock method. But uh, there's the auctioneer, the slaves behind him, uh, the people uh, bidding who are interested in what's going on, the slave market in Charleston. A Courier and Ives political cartoon. Blondins, we learned, were uh, tightrope walk, tight walkers in the circus. In the, in the circus. And uh, <coughs> later on, please nobody ask me what the Salt River is. I don't know what the Salt River is. <laughs> whether, whether there is such a place or whether, whether it's, it's just used uh, as uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to bring some emphasis to this issue of abolition. You're an abolition rock, I think, at all. You want, if, if you wanted to uh, read these, uh, it's, uh, it's Stephen Douglas making some comments, Lincoln, who was the candidate, the brand new candidate for president. There is constitutional bridge. The Constitution was a huge issue. It was an enormous issue. Uh, whether. Uh, Coming down to the fact of whether uh, whether the North had uh, had the right to keep the South from leaving the Union, uh, uh, there is the newspaper uh, editor Horace Greeley in in an unfortunate mode there. But uh, this is Courier and Ives as the issue was really heating up in 1860. <coughs> These are the eminent opponents of the slave power. Now, this was being uh, 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 this this was being printed um, just as uh, abolition was reaching was reaching its heights. Included. Maybe you can pick the people up. There's Henry Ward Beecher, upper uh, left. Uh, William Lloyd Garrison, the most fiery radical of the abolitionists, publisher of The Liberator. Uh, William Cullen Bryan. John Greenleaf Whittier. How many would, I will tell you until I studied this thing, I had no idea those guys were as intimately involved. Charles Sumner the uh, leading abolitionist in the U.S. Uh, Senate. John Brown, the fiery abolitionist, reached his highest fame, probably not as much in Harper's Ferry as he did in um, Kansas as a free soiler. And John Stuart Curry chose to uh, make this, uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, create this picture from which the lithograph was later made uh, in Kansas, the slave child, um, the, the sunflower, the cyclone in the background, the rage and the fury of Brown, far and away, at least in my opinion, the finest rendition of Brown. Uh, this hangs, uh, the portrait hangs in the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art, a, an Old Testament 
killer who gave no second thought to wiping out his opponents in retribution for mm -hmm. something else that may have, may have happened before. On the other side of the scale, Harriet Beecher Stowe. Now this is a somewhat, uh, this is a somewhat rare print. The only other place I've seen it hang is uh, in the Harriet Beecher Stowe house in Hartford, Connecticut. What's wonderful, of course, is just, it's Stowe as a young woman, probably just after she wrote uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, which, incidentally, get this, in a nation of 34 million in the first year, 300,000 copies of that book were sold. It was 1852. By 1855, three million copies had been sold. By the end of the century, by the end of the 19th century, it had, it had been published in 30 different languages. We own two of those copies, two of the more recent copies, one in Korean and one written in um, Chinese, Mandarin, in uh, our collection of books over at the Olin Library, but a remarkable person. Huge impact, both in the North, of course, as well as in the South, where she infuriated the people. Her brother, Henry Ward Beecher, a minister. William Lloyd Garrison, who, when South Carolina seceded in December of 1860, cheered. Let him go, he said. We're better off without him. And um, Charles Sumner. This is a very rare print. I just like to make those remarks because we have a few of them. We probably have a few more of the 300 or so that I don't know anything about. But I was told by an archivist from um, uh, the uh, Massachusetts Historical Society that uh, the only other place that they know that this print exists is in the Massachusetts Historical Society. But uh, this is by a, a German, uh, a German art artist by the name of Sheely, no less. <laughs> uh, Horace Greeley, the abolitionist publisher. Now then, I'm going to get into a few battle scenes by the uh, uh, late 19th century artist uh, Lewis Kurtz. Um, interesting, Lewis Kurtz, 36 battle scenes of the Civil War are still being published and used today. Far and away, the most prolific of all of the uh, Civil War artists, and believe me, there, there were plenty of them, and there, there, are, there are still plenty of them, but uh, I brought this along just as, as uh, Exhibit A. Now, this is a wonderful book that came out a few years ago. It's called The American Civil War. It's published by the Library of Congress. It's had very wide distribution. On the cover is a Kurtz and Allison battle scene. And wherever I have these pink tabs, there are Kurtz and Allison battle scenes uh, exhibited in here. So, uh, the run of Lewis Kurtz and his lithographer uh, Allison has been remarkable, 140 years or so. He came on as uh, a portraitist and as a landscape artist. He did this wonderful landscape of Harper's Ferry. And I don't know if it was done before John Brown or after John Brown, but I've seen, seen it illustrated in books and uh, Number of uh, number of different publications. I can guarantee you that uh, if he hadn't done the 36 war scenes, uh, nobody would know or care that Lewis Kurtz happened to paint this thing. Incidentally, um, the 36 battle scenes that we had, and this is the first of them, at the Olin Library. We are only one of two collections in the whole world, as far as we know, that have all 36 of these originals. Um, the other institution that owns them is the Chicago Historical Society. This is Bull Run. Uh, it was um, a major defeat. 
Kirk's incidentally uh, did these pictures 15, 20, 25 years after the war. So he had a lot of perspective. And he had time to talk to veterans. And he even had time to visit a number of these battlefields. In his pictures, in most of his pictures, he's telling a story as opposed to some of those others that we will see uh, that are snapshots. Now those are made by the brave illustrators who were on the field. They were taking the same risk as the soldiers were. They were right up many times, right on the front line. We'll, we'll see a couple of those. But that's, that's, pro that's providing the traditional snapshot. Uh, more recent times, the, uh, uh, the Army leaving the landing craft, Frank Kappa's picture at, uh, at Normandy. You know, that's a wonderful snapshot in, in time in World War II. But uh, this is show you, shows you what's going on uh, in, the, uh, in the first instance. Uh, the Union's holding them uh, pretty good, creating a counterattack here. Um, this is as I interpret. People have, have gained their own interpretations. But this is uh, uh, roughly Stonewall Jackson's line. As, uh, it, as it looked as if the center of the line was going to be uh, crushed by this, uh, uh, by this movement of, of, uh, of Union troops. General B of South Carolina said, look, form on the Virginians. There stands Stonewall. Uh, excuse me, there stands, stands Jackson, like a stone wall. Uh, later on, the counterattack comes. The Union soldiers retreat. It's the only time in any picture that I can, that, uh, of any uh, dimension at all, that I can recall seeing our flag on the ground. And um, here are the Union soldiers retreating across the bridge, across on TM, or rather, uh, Bull Run Creek, uh, back to Washington. The assault, storming Fort Wagner. This is important because it was the first major engagement of black troops in the Civil War. This is the 54th Massachusetts. Uh, I am not an artist, as, as I think you, 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 you understand or have picked out, but this, is, this has a traditional uh, tr uh, triangular uh, movement here of uh, uh, Colonel Shaw, who put the 54th together, dying on the parapets, which he did, and, uh, the, and the black troops counting up to themselves very well, first major engagement. Uh, this is pretty fierce stuff going on here. We don't often they get these graphic views of bayonets going into someone's uh, heart and uh, up front fighting with, fighting with bayonets and knives and so on, but this is showing the uh, ferocity of, uh, of, of what happened at Fort Wagner. It was a Union loss. Today, I've, I've been out here a few times. Today, uh, Fort Wagner is underwater. It's a, it's a sunken island. It doesn't exist anymore. You can look across the harbor and see, well, it was about over there, but it's not it's simply not there anymore. But uh, famous, of course, for that. Uh, Reason. Now, uh, again, this is the Illustrated London News. This is probably a fellow by the name of Itali who um, sketched this. He was probably right about where it shows that he is. He, well, remember, now he wasn't using a telephoto lens or anything. He had to be up there showing this picture. But the interesting thing about this is that the uh, storming. Fort Wagner here is that uh, there aren't any black troops that you can pick out easily. I don't have any explanation for that, but I've stared at this thing a number of times. It's just interesting that he took a somewhat uh, different perspective, but uh, his view uh, topographically was probably the most accurate because he was there picturing all this stuff going on. Uh, 
Gettysburg, the seminal battle of the Civil War. In my opinion, it's the finest rendition. Uh, again, it tells the story. Why is it a great picture? Well, first of all, he was there. I think most of us have been there at least once. I've, I've been there eight times. I'm sure he was there at least twice. But topographically, this is all accurate. The little round top, the uh, big round top in the background here. A mile away, uh, the uh, coming out of the copse of trees, the Confederate artillery, somewhere between 80 and 120 cannon lined up. Um, they had an excellent chief of artillery, but that day he was off. Uh, a lot of what he was shooting went, went over these guys. Uh, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't a very effective bombardment, but initially we're showing here a bombardment from a, from a mile away. Um, Four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, uh, reluctantly, uh, Longstreet uh, issued the command to go forward. Uh, Pickett's 15,000 rushed the center of the Union line. Maid, General Maid, who is often not given as much credit as he should be, is, is back here with his, probably further back, he's probably back here somewhere with his staff. But he had correctly estimated that uh, on the third day, having tried the left side of the line and the right side of the Union line, that uh, he'd probably go for the center. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, when you do something 15 or 20 years later, you can do some, uh, you can do some uh, uh, our, our, our artistic uh, thought about it. Uh, this is General Armstead going down after he breached the Union, after the troops, the Confederate troops breached the Union line, but he probably really wasn't on a horse. That would have been a rather foolish place to be. But indeed, he did, uh, he did die right at the point of contact. These are the Confederates that for 20 or 25 feet or yards uh, uh, broke the stone wall. Again then, moments later, out at the very side, this is no snapshot. Moments later, the reserves are coming in uh, because they had plenty of them waiting. Uh, they're going to throw these people back. And sometime later that evening, after uh, Lee pulled all of his troops back up this way, uh, the uh, prisoners were being led off the field. It's interesting, in their long career, of producing these 36 battle scenes, only one known to date was ever made a picture, an oil on canvas. And uh, I was fortunate, fortunate enough at the Muhlenberg College, where incidentally Shirley Baker and her husband Richard Baker were both graduates. I was fortunate enough to spend a day, it's six feet the mural is six feet by 12 and a half feet, oil on canvas. And, uh, but it wasn't signed by Kurt, so there's no indication that it was Kurt's. And uh, I studied it long and hard, determined that indeed Lewis Kurtz had painted the thing. Well, that, that's, that's just a point of interest. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't make any pictures, any paintings outside of that for publication. Uh, Everything that he did was uh, a 10 stone chromo lithograph. And uh, as Jeff Pike here can tell you, it takes a long time to make one of those, <laughs> which is probably why it took him 10 or 11 years to produce all 36 of these things. 